What does that mean? High fructose corn syrup father? Do they sell corn syrup? Do they grow it? I don't know. Hello, I'm sitting on the floor of my living room in front of my TV, but especially my record player, because today I wanna to show you how I record my vinyl records so that I can import them into iTunes, Apple Music, what's it called? I don't even remember. Um, the impetus for this was because I bought Dua Lipa's Moonlight Edition of her record, Future Nostalgia, thinking it would come with a card with an MP3 download, and it didn't. And I already had the regular Future Nostalgia record, but I didn't have all the deluxe tracks, and I kind of don't want to buy them all again on iTunes or Apple Music or whatever. I'm not paying for any streaming services right now. I still meticulously manage my iTunes, Apple Music uh, library. So I want to capture this deluxe disc so that I can import it and listen to it on my phone on the go. And I'm going to use my Audio-Technica ATLP60 and my Tascam DR40 with, uh, with my Audio-Technica headphones and this little uh, adapter that adapts RCA to 3.5 mil. So first, I'm going to unplug my record player from my analog switcher. This switches into my old Bose soundbar. I just have this old analog soundbar for my TV. So input one is the TV and input two is actually just this adapter so I can plug anything into my soundbar uh, with a you know with an aux cable. And then input three is the turntable and input four isn't being used right now. So I need to unplug the record player. And the record player is very, it, uh, in one way it's nice. I don't need a, uh, like a preamp, a special preamp for it. It already does all the vinyl record, but it has really short RCA plugs back here. So I've got an extender on it so that I can reach. All right, I've got my RCA cables coming out of my turntable into the adapter, white left, red right, and they're in their respective plugs here, yes. Yes, white, white. Hard to do this one-handed. I like the Tascam DR05. It's it's very simple. Uh, what's really nice is even though it's a relatively inexpensive recorder, I can still do 24-bit wave at 96 kilohertz. I mean, it would be nice to have 32-bit float, but for a tiny less than $100 now recorder, I think that there's like an upgraded version that like the USB port makes it a, uh, audio interface for your computer now. This is the older one, but I, you can get these used for really cheap. Very, very nice. Uh, I would, I'd love to upgrade this to like the DR10. Um, if, if the DR10 gets 32 bit float, I think that would be fantastic. Cause I think Zoom now has a tiny, uh, 32 bit float recorder and so does Tentacle. All right, so I press record once to arm it and I'll set my levels. Now, because this was a double record, the thing I really want to record is the second album, but I'll pop on the first album, make sure it sounds okay, and set my levels, um, just because I want to run this as few times as I can before I actually record it. So let's pop this on the turntable. That's gonna take two hands. Okay, got the record on the turntable and I remembered I have lights that I can actually show you. You could actually see it's not just pitch black. I'm gonna hit start here, start it spinning up, and you may notice, you know, even though this is a brand new final record right out of the pouch, it's still a little dusty, so I'm gonna cleaner here. I put a little fluid on it, get all the dust and cat hair. I'm gonna put on my headphones so I can listen to what the record sounds like in the recorder, listen to what I'm actually recording as I play it. So I'm gonna hit start and drop the needle and adjust my levels on the recorder. So I'm aiming to get the levels into the, up to this arrow, but not hitting the far right side where it peaks and this little red light will turn on and peak. So I don't want that. Nope, all right, so I hit a peak just a little bit, so I'm gonna turn that down. And I'm just listening to the rest of this song and make sure we're still getting good strong levels here. I think I got my levels dialed in on the recorder and settings are good on the turntable. So I'm gonna to swap to the other vinyl and hit record. Got the second record up. I just, I just cleaned it off and I've got it spinning. 
So all I need to do is hit record on the recorder. I hit it once, I hit it twice. We're recording, it's counting. And all I have to do is drop the needle. Plus, listen to the record. Okay, side one is done and Lauren's cat Fin Fin has come to join us and he's a very curious cat so I need to keep him occupied because I want to try to minimize getting cat hair on the record as I'm trying to record it or that'll come in as a pop or maybe even cause the record to hop a groove. He's a very curious cat and he can get tangled up in the wires really easily. No! Let's flip this over and record side two. Walk away. We've got side two ready to go. You can see the cat hair floating in the air. So hopefully I can get a clean recording without any pops or scratches. Side two. Side two just finished. I'm gonna pack up this record back in its sleeve. And you know what, man, I really miss, I really don't play records that much because the cat gets in the way. He likes to f see what I'm fiddling with and get his cat hair all up in it. And uh, it's, it's trapped kind of in this uh, TV stand. And I just, I just don't like it. Maybe I'll have to take this turntable up to my office and maybe I'll use it more if it's up there. Okay, I'm back at my computer. I've got the audio files from my audio recorder. I'm gonna drag it over to my SSD and I'm gonna edit these in Final Cut because I'm a Final Cut junkie just to kind of clean them up and level them out before I import them into the music app. Here's my last vlog, but let me make a new library for this project here. And let's import that audio file. Because it's a WAV file, Final Cut brought it in as dialog. I can, you know, just for purposes of, of keeping things labeled with the right role, I can switch this to music and the inspector. I can also make adjustments to volume here for the track before I drop it into the timeline. Now, let's make a new timeline. I'm going to, it doesn't really matter what my video resolution is because I'm not really using video, but I am going to make sure my audio is 44.1 kilohertz because that's typically how CDs and iTunes music is mastered. So I'm going to call this side one. And then I'm going to take a look at my audio tracks. Now I recorded side one and side two on both of them on the same audio track. So I'm just going to grab side one and then this is side two. I can just tell that from the waveforms. Now I'm going to press Q to add this to the timeline, but not put it in the primary timeline. The reason why I don't want to put this in the primary timeline, especially right now, because when an audio file is in the timeline, I have to trim it frame by frame. So even if I zoom in to a sub frame level, this light gray area is, is the single frame, the space and time, which is the single frame. I can only trim this frame by frame, but if it's a clip that's attached to the primary timeline, I can edit on a sub frame level. So that means I can zoom in and make my trim happen even inside of a frame. So technically this audio file is within this frame step, whereas I would have to have cut it or trimmed it on this stepping scale. So um, I like editing audio outside of the primary timeline because I can do subframe edits. So now I've set where the track ends. Let's go to the end and see where the side, hear how this wraps up. I see some, I can see some pops here. I think I can trim this before those, but let's just take a quick listen. It's a little bit of a reverb and then, yeah, just some pops from the turntable as it was ending that side, but I can do that. I can trim that off and I can add a little fade out here and then I'll just want to trim my slug or my gap clip to be just a hair longer than my audio file. All right, this looks pretty good. Everything's pretty level. And, and the way I recorded it in the recorder, I could see on the recorder that I was hitting like negative four, negative three dB and it's coming in like negative five. So what I want to do is I want to put a limiter on this just to kind of bring everything up to zero because most music is mastered at zero dB. But also if there's any um, pops or clicks, um, those will also get squashed into 
the sound. Now I could run, there's like plugins and VSTs and AU plugins that, that are meant for vinyl capture and, and can find those pops and clicks. Isotope has some, I don't have that specific one, but I'm just gonna grab, go into levels here and grab the logic limiter, drop it on here and kind of turn it up, make my ceiling zero dB, turn it up just so it's just touching zero dB, the pops and clips can get above it, but I'm not going to be, um, you know, really changing the dynamics of the recorded audio that much. I wanna kind of keep the warmth and not enter that like early 2000s loudness war that, that was going on. So let's play a little bit of, of a section that definitely like looks loud. So let's turn this up about the four dB. Let's give it a bit longer release. Also, I'm gonna turn on a soft knee. My output level is zero. That's my hard limit there. Look ahead, two milliseconds. That's pretty quick. Um, so my reduction, I, want, I don't want too much reduction because that's the actual amount of compressing I'm doing. So maybe I'll dial this back one dB. Kind of jump around, make sure this is... Yeah. The tricky thing about these deluxe albums is like these extra songs are kind of just like a hodgepodge of things. I like them because I want to hear like as much, if I really like the artist, I want to hear as much as I can get my hands on. But for like in terms of like cohesiveness of an album, typically like songs are selected for an album because they're the best ones and then they're placed in an order that kind of like makes sense for an album. And with deluxe albums, with all these extra songs at the end, it sometimes some of that gets lost and one, you can lose kind of the flow of the album. And two, sometimes these rejected songs, these deluxe songs are, because they're coming from the scrap pile sometimes, they're at different levels of masteredness. Cause they, you know, obviously at some point they said, this isn't gonna be on the album and they stopped producing it. And sometimes that ends up on these deluxe records. So this one, you know, there are some inconsistencies from one track to another. And obviously like there's one track that I can definitely tell is from Miley Cyrus's album, but they added, you know, Dua Lipa's co-vocal on it. And that's what ended up on this album. So a bunch, bunch of weird stuff. Nonetheless, I think that's pretty balanced. So I'm going to export this as a wave. Now by default in Final Cut, the share button doesn't have just a wave file. And, and obviously you can tell I added this because there's a compressor icon next to it. Now, if you want me to make a video about how I make my compressor exports for Final Cut, I can I can do that, but I, I don't think I have time to get into that for this video today. So I'm gonna make a wave. I need to tweak this because Gilbert noticed that when I send him wave files out of Final Cut, they're like twice as big as they should be, even if they're ster mono to stereo, like it's, it's still quite a bit bigger. But this I am going to export as a wave but I'm going to compress it one more time inside of Apple Music once I get it into Apple Music. But I wanna keep this wave nice and big. Uh, obviously I am dropping the Hertz from 96 kilohertz to 44.1 kilohertz, but I'm trying to still keep it an uncompressed wave beyond dropping the frequency because iTunes won't figure that out I need to drop it before I bring it into iTunes so then I can compress it. Otherwise, iTunes will keep that high sample rate. And then when I make my AAC file for, you know, syncing to my phone or my other Apple devices, it'll be too high of a sample rate to actually play in my Apple device. So I am stepping it down there, but uh, I'm going to have an uncompressed wave that I can send to Apple Music so that I can make a nice AAC file for my devices. And that exported super quick, it's ready to go. I'm going to now duplicate this timeline. I'll duplicate it as a snapshot, not that big of a deal. It just adds some text at the end. And if I had any compound clips in this original timeline, they would not be linked back to that original timeline with this snapshot. So that's the difference between a regular duplication and a snapshot. It is duplicating, but your compound clips aren't linked. Okay, so now I've got this other timeline. I'm going to grab my side B here, add it underneath. I'm gonna trim, take out that other clip and let's trim my clip to where it actually starts here. 
Yep, right in there. Uh, I'm going to do option left bracket, trim that up, scoot that over. Let's go to the end here. And I think we're faded out by then. And we can add a little fade out there. And earlier, I, I, I dragged this out. I guess I didn't necessarily need to do that, but I did. Now, I think my levels from the previous track were pretty good. So I'm gonna hop back in that other timeline, copy my clip, highlight my new clip, and paste just the effects from that clip. They've come over, but let's double check my levels here. So let's click on the clip. Let's go down to my effects, open up the limiter tools here, and watch my reduction during some loud sections here. Yeah, sitting around 1.2, 1.3, that's good. Here's another loud section. Yep, and this other loud section. This section's louder, but I'm not too worried about it. I'm also not sure why the left channel was re louder than the right channel. Again, you know, this is just so that I have it recorded and I'm gonna play it on my phone, most likely in my car. So I'm not too, too worried about that. That seems good to go. So I'm going to export this again using my wave preset from Compressor and just put it in the same folder here. It'll export super quick. Great. Now I'm gonna hop back in the finder and head over to my iTunes folder. This is the iTunes folder where all my music lives. And inside of there is an automatically add to music app. So I'm gonna grab these two wave files, drag them into this folder. Now the next time I launch Apple Music, it's a spinning hard drive. It, it's gonna, it has to spin up before it can copy over. But after these copy, I can launch Apple Music. It will add them to my library. And from there, I'm going to make an AAC file so that I can then sync it and it, you know, it's not, you know, 380 megabytes. And then I don't pay for Apple Music, but I still pay for iTunes Match. So this will then push to iTunes Match. All right, so here's my two new tracks just popped in. If I sort by date added. Now what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to go in here and fill in the metadata for the song. So this is Dua Lipa. The album is Future Nostalgia um, Deluxe Moonlight Edition. I don't know, something like that. Uh, sure, we'll put Dua Lipa in the album artist. Genre is pop. This came out, uh, I think, 2020. Maybe this part came out 2021. Um, and I'm just gonna say two tracks for this. And then I'll need to go in and name these one of two and then two of two. Now, if I wanted to get really fancy and break up each song and, you know, name them and do that, that's fine. I'm just lazy and I'm just gonna do side one, side two, cause I'm probably gonna listen to it all together anyway. I'm probably gonna make a playlist of the standard album and then stick these two tracks at the end, uh, but there's still a WAV file. So what I gotta do is I need to highlight these two tracks and go file, convert to AAC. And it's going to make an AAC based off of my settings and the preferences. So if I go to preferences and under uh, files, I can click on import settings and changes. So right now I'm making a 32 kilobit per second AAC. I could switch it to Apple lossless, which is cool because um, it will keep a lot more of that data but for this, I'm not too worried about it. I only have a handful of albums that I've ripped uh, that I've kept Apple lossless because I really care about them. And even then, once I upload them to iTunes Match and then listen to them, they're gonna be scaled down, I think, to a 256 AAC. So I, I'm not, not too, too worried. All right, my track's finished converting. It's already started playing. Now, once the second track finishes, I'm going to trash these two files, these WAV files from my, I keep wanting to call it iTunes, my Apple Music Library. So I just have these AAC audio file versions. All right, my AAC files have finished converting. So I'm gonna highlight these WAV files, do Command Delete to remove them from my 
library here, and then I'm just going to go to file, library, update, cloud library, and then, yeah, it's like, oh no, I, I don't know what to do with these files, and I want to push them to the cloud. Uh, so that is my process for recording my vinyl records uh, with the Tascam, cleaning them up in Final Cut, and then importing them into Apple Music and iTunes Match so I can listen to them on my phone. Um, I'm lazy and I just do side one, side two. I don't break them up in individual tracks, but uh, this, this is the thing. And you know what, if I'm not happy with this, I see that this deluxe album is on iTunes. I could just buy these songs since I bought the main album. I can then just buy the deluxe songs. But I figured I wanted to support the artist, so I bought the vinyl, figuring more money will end up in the artist's pockets um, from buying the vinyl. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the math on that, but uh, that's, that's what I do. I hope this was informative. I hope this was helpful, uh, and I will see you tomorrow. Peace. Shoo.